Can you imagine the power of bringing 10 distinguished visitors who are all experts in their field around teaching and learning to the graded staff, 20 students, teachers, board members, leadership team, and together being a think tank to discover the desirable future of teaching and learning in the school. Well, that's what the school did. When I first got invited to the think tank, I saw the email and said think tank, and I thought, okay, this will be interesting. There'll be some folks from different parts of the world, professionals, and maybe I'll be a part of this. Um, when I looked at the invite list, however, and I saw the different types of people who were invited and would participate, I became incredibly excited because you often get a bunch of professionals who have great ideas and speak to one another about what education should be. Rarely do you have the opportunity to work with other educators alongside these professionals as well as board members and I think importantly and surprisingly students. We've been giving this chance to not only relate our own personal experience as students but really represent this major group of students and this not only forces us to think about how we think the school could improve knowing our peers, but also how maybe if we were in our peers' shoes or if our peers were in our shoes, what they would say and what they would personally feel. I have to say it was a huge relief to know that there were some students in the room um, because I feel like sometimes about two hours into a workshop, people think, oh, we should get some student voice going here. And, you know, so they have kept our, our conversations real. Uh, they have brought us back and said, hey, look, you're losing the plot here. You, you've, you've gone off down a tangent. And only students can sometimes say that in a way that the adults have to listen. Um, good morning, my name is Marina. Um, I'm a ninth grader. And I think that the think tank is really important for me because um, this is much larger than just me as a student. It's my friends in the hallway, the fourth graders that I tutor. It's about how students are going to learn now and how students are going to learn in the future and how we can make it a reality for everyone to be the best person that they can be and the best student and have the greatest potential that they can reach. To learn from students, to learn from faculty at Graded, to learn from one another and, and bring that together to co-construct an idea of, of what could be in the future was very exciting. So we thought there's no better way than bring some of the most diverse and, and talented thought leaders around the world from your different um, fields and perspectives. So each of you play a critical role, whether it be with inclusive purposes or competency-based learning, um, neuroscience to social emotional learning um, to design thinking and technology. I'm here mostly because I think that uh, Rich has put together a really good management team um, uh, and teachers and administrators and I think it, the idea as a board is to try to give him power so that we can attract the best teachers and the best uh, administrators so you guys feel empowered and you feel like you're making a difference and then if you do that you'll go back and work and be able to do better where you are and we can become a magnet for training and bringing in the best people in the region. How will we do this? How will we start to streamline, find synergy, prioritize? If we get the what and the why right, the how comes in some ways. I mean we have to train teachers in the how, we have to train ourselves in how to do it, but we have to know what it is we're doing. Without being completely experimental, we can be a change agent as, a, as an organization um, and, a, and, a, and a representative of this region and in, in, in international education in general. So. I hope we push to be, uh, continue to be very courageous in, in, that, in that effort and in, in that way. You know, you can create wonderful learning experiences for children that are memorable, that stick, um, that are important, but do those learning experiences transfer to real life? How do you actually think about the world and bring the world into the classroom so that they're thinking about you know, the, the real world issues that we're, we're facing right now and use that as a way to, to teach the core content in history and social science or, or, or science. Um, it's, it's really uh, making education an authentic experience. It is not divorced from life, but actually is part of life. Education is a naturally creative profession, but it also has a lot of rules and structures. Those, and some of those rules and structures can be positive, but they can also be limiting. And so when in schools, you know, what we try and do is find the awesome, incredible, creative pursuits that teachers already have, and then give them a process that invites them to make these slight behavioral changes, which can have profound and powerful impact. We were doing social studies, and we were from a sort of prescribed curriculum, um, and the outcomes that the curriculum was looking for was, 
for the kids to gain an appreciation of shared space. And the kids felt very dissatisfied with our classroom library. So they said, we should redo our library. I said, great, that sounds like an amazing project to do together. So I collected models of pictures of great libraries around the world in classrooms and other places, and we studied them. We created a criteria list of what makes a really great library. And then over the next weeks, the kids did it. They took all of our shelving into the hallway and they sanded down every bookshelf and they repainted them. They brought in materials from home, fabrics and pillows. Some kids worked on regenreing and some kids said we need a book display with recommendations and they had all of these things. And over the course of a month, they completely transformed this space and they had sort of gotten an idea of what high quality looks like. They collaborated with one another. And then for the rest of the year, whenever anybody, a parent, another kid, another teacher visited our classroom, um, they would run to them and say like, please come in, can I show you? our fabulous library. Nothing else mattered in the classroom at that point. It was this centerpiece library, and it was um, a really meaningful experience for all of us together. A culture of learning, particularly for the teachers, and then moving from the I do to the we do. And so how, as you're building this culture, how do you leverage and share knowledge between teachers from different levels of their experience as well? People learn. Um, very similarly, uh, whether they're, they're young or older. And um, I, I think that's a, a great place to start is, is thinking through how does this apply to kids and then moving it even higher and applying these same concepts, all of those same words to the faculty within schools, huge. And then also what does the graded teacher profile look like? What does that need to be developed into? What does she, he or she needs to consist of? And that gives clarity to our objective when it comes to student learning and teacher instruction. We were learning about the Napoleonic era and the satellite states. And I remember that my teacher, he sat on the middle and we surrounded him with tables and chairs. And we each had a paper representing each state. And he was the main member state. So we each gave our paper to him in the center and he like crumpled everything together to show the influence that he would have on us, the satellite states. So I think that's the best way for me to learn. And so from that lesson, I, I remember telling them, no matter what it is you have a question about, it, you have to question everything in life. No matter what it is, if it's history from years and years ago, question it, inquire, find out more. And it was just really like, like, you know, really, uh, authentic, I think it's good to have authentic because I think that allows people to actually have a real experience and I think teachers are going to be better teaching something that they believe authentic and it'll be more agreeable to them. Uh, positively impact the world, I think that's a great thing so you're not just there thinking you're learning in an isolated box that you're trying to do something better and not just for yourself um, and that has some form. Where I may have a different opinion is that all initiatives need to be meaningful, that I think it's, it's okay to try to do things and they can fail. So I don't want to have a bar that's so high that not everything has to work. You know, you, can, you should have initiatives that may not be there or maybe not everyone buys in on and you say, well, I don't agree with it, but why don't you try? So I believe a lot in trying and failing. And a big thing we talked about was making sure that changes to the learning curriculum and uh, teachers' responsibilities feel more evolutionary than revolutionary. So in a sense, helping teachers build upon previous changes rather than each time there's a new change having to break down the way they teach and rebuild it from a new perspective. It would be easier for teachers and for administrators to build upon previous changes. I like evolution and I like revolution, but I also like um, well, I will call the baseline. Where is graded today? Where are we today? Um, what are the things that we're doing today that we're doing right? And we want to keep it and preserve it and actually protect it from evolution and from revolution. Innovation does not mean doing something new. Innovation means making a change that has an impact. When you have an opportunity to build on what graded, a school like Graded is already doing, um, you have so many of the basics in place. Um, and you have so many of the, the fundamentals in place uh, for student success um, that what we're really doing is trying to fine tune a beautiful engine. I think there's a couple of things that have happened big picture around uh, the education movement. Uh, one is which I feel, I feel like cognitive science and our understanding of the brain has really begun to 
bring us together around how we teach and how we expect educators to work with young people and we know that that starts with authentic relationships and connections. Uh, we know that that starts when students and teachers are engaged in opportunities and experiences that are that are that are real for them and that have real, real world application. How are we going to measure what our students are doing at graded and then after graded that really demonstrates a a change in the way we're interacting with the world around us. We as a school, we as individual students, we as alumni have graded. And that's the big shift really. Um, it's really to create young people who are really competent in this new and very uncertain environment. There's a word um, that's been coined called VUCA, which is volatile, uncertain, uh, complex, and ambiguous. That's the nature of our world. And so if we can create young people who can thrive within that kind of environment, those are the leaders of the future. I was impressed by the number of people who attended the panel discussion yesterday. Mm -hmm. And even like last night, there were a lot of supporters there. I think from a board perspective, what I've continued to hear is that, Rich, you and the team have really moved the board along in a positive way where they expect change. But one thing that I'm still unclear of is what are the non-negotiables. There's no following of sheep in our faculty. And that's true of our leadership team as well. And so we still have not come to consensus, I'll, I'll tell you, as a leadership team about all of this. We have divergent discussions constantly. And, and at some point that's healthy. But at some point we have to actually land and move forward in one voice. What I hear you saying is you, no one's going to, everyone's not going to be happy with the final outcome. But I can't imagine a more transparent and open process of gathering input and listening. So I would certainly hope that going forward you'd have a lot of support and it would be one of those. How do we decide as a school uh, what is the most important set of conceptual understandings and skills and even habits of heart in terms of dispositions and character qualities that we want every child to walk across the stage with and be able to use in their lived life. And it doesn't mean that we create all these cookie cutter kids because, you know, that's the core. And then they'll have their own experience at grade you know, different teachers, different classes, different coaches. So when you meet these kids out in the world someday, you know, you might look at them and go, how did you learn? Where did that come from? How did you learn that? And you went, well, I'm a graded graduate, you know, that, that sort of thing. And it's, it causes us to focus, to, to uh, say, this is important. And therefore, everything is called backward planning. Everything after that in the school is planned around that, right from the time they set foot on the campus. We don't want young people who are going to be bystanders in the world. We want them to be actual players and, and actors and who have a passion and they want to think through and, and, and do things that are going to be for the common good. Marina created a speech in which her call to action was that her class, the class of 2022, should raise uh, 2.2 million reais to endow in perpetuity a seat for uh, a graded scholar, a scholarship student. And um, it was based on the premise that um, graded has a moral obligation to increase the socioeconomic diversity of our student body. And when Marina gave her speech for the first time, she not only moved others, but she was so moved by her own call that she was weeping. I mean, it was clearly something that she felt deeply that it will always stay with her and that in fact she continues to work on, we met about it a few weeks ago, that it's like, it's a project for her now. And so that for me was like, there's a student who takes her learning and makes it relevant and real and it's about her life. What are these core ideas or core values that we have that we really are the most important to us instead of just putting too many and like overcharging us with it? Students are so different. When they come from diverse backgrounds, when they carry different uh, nations, colors, languages, and then they find themselves in one place. It's a very difficult challenge. I think one point is to acknowledge that you don't create diversity on those conditions. Diversity already exists. When we design our curriculum to the edges, we meet the needs of all learners. So what strategies have traditionally been reserved for students who are struggling? How can we bring those into our gen ed classrooms rather than reserving them for learning support to meet the needs of, of all learners? On the create list, the thing that's most impactful to me that I think is really around learning. Learning science, metacognition, that kind of action happening intentionally and well-trained by teachers 
and well demonstrated by students. That could happen effectively soon. What does it mean to walk across the stage at Graded? Meta-learning, which is exactly the fact that you, you have a learning experience or you're engaging in a learning experience and you're asking yourself questions. There's this interior dialogue, you know, thinking about your thinking. Why am I doing this? Uh, is there a better way to learn this? What's the purpose of this? You know, do, does this task I have, is there anything in my prior knowledge that I can bring forth to that? Those are all questions a really effective learner needs to ask as they learn. That needs to be taught. I mean, that's part of, besides homeo, I'm a science teacher, homeostasis and chemistry is that learning about their own learning. This is graded. This is our personality as a school, as a student body, and as a community. And these are the choices that we're gonna make. And uh, I don't think we will solve everything and create the new graded in these two days, but we will be able to have um, a focal point which can lead to, I think, a very strong and progressive direction. Isabella, Fischotter, Carmel, Ken Duff, Brianna, Duff, Bethany, Bethany, Duff, Alice, Dean, Jesus, Isabella, we know